some 60 kilometers northeast of Nantes and it's a dream setting for a weekend of sailing where the priorities are both performance and pleasure. The competitors have already arrived for the tour of the islands of southern Brittany and are ready to fight it out over three days of racing. Three different race days that will challenge both crew and boat, testing their ability, their tactical awareness and their understanding of the local conditions. It's all centered around Cloar Conuet and its neighboring islands, which are well known to sailors, the magical Glenon Archipelago and the island of Gua. The Breton town was recently awarded status as one of only 10 European towns of sport. And this area has everything a sailor could want. With sun and a bit of wind forecast, it should be perfect for spectators. For competitors, it's time to focus on the first briefing. Et je crois qu'on va être comme ça pendant trois jours. Mon intention, c'est de partir sur le côtier vers les Glénans, quoi. Donc on a on a la journée. Il fait beau. For safety and fairness, the rules are pretty comprehensive. This is a one-design competition. The seven crews all have exactly the same boat. Les départs vont de travers. Donc, si un bateau qui est pris au CS, il s'arrête, il laisse passer les autres et il repart derrière. The idea is to take money and team size and technical advantage out of the equation, and it's all about the sailor's ability, even to the extent of having to weigh the team members. Le poids, c'est l'ennemi, hein, forcément, euh, que ce soit en course automobile ou, ou en bateau. Euh, bon, ouais, on verra après, après, les règles aussi, hein, qui font que les sailors peuvent déterminer la performance de l'équipe de l'équipe de l'équipe de l'équipe de l'équipe. Le poids, c'est un truc, quelque part, c'est un peu facile à gagner. Euh, après, sur soi, c'est moins simple. Ouais, comme ça, aujourd'hui. Dimanche, il y a demain. The crew is weighing in. The three crew members have to be over 220 kilograms. Vianney Ancelin, who's the designer, says he's in the process of weighing the crews to ensure that it's a fair race. They mustn't be under 220 kgs. You might think heavier is faster, he says, but that's not the case. The lighter you are, the faster you go. He says every 10 kilograms can make a difference of about half a knot, and that adds up over hours of racing. The star of the show is probably the boat, the DM24. It's a multi hull, a little over seven meters long and five meters wide, designed to be exciting, affordable and manageable. No alterations are permitted once it arrives. Et multicoque pour moi c'est un bateau qui bah, il says, est facile en vitesse. Are facile, pretty easy to sail at speed. Il apporte du plaisir plus que for him, they give more pleasure than a monohull. Je veux pas dire de mal de, des monocoques parce que ça existera toujours. He doesn't want to say anything simple. bad about monohulls bah, as they're here to stay, but they're not as quick. Pour, euh, and for him speed euh, is fun. fun quoi. Donc on a travaillé pour faire un sport boat. They were working on making a performance sports boat that was accessible to everyone and one that was aimed at people who had never really sailed a multi-hull, so it had to be safe, which is why they opted for the trimaran. Qui aime, euh, bah, regarder, he says it's a boat for people who like to sail, vite, like to go fast, un peu comme courir. and certainly on one footing, for bah, on a people who like to on test on themselves. There was certainly plenty of space and loads of sail area. Vincent euh, Bouvier est un bateau qui est skipper euh, of the boats, très simple ADH 18. à conduire, mais très difficile à faire aller vite. Il dit que c'est une nuance d'importance. C'est très difficile de faire aller vite. Donc euh, voilà, et et un peu de il, est, il est intéressant pour ça. C'est un bateau qui d'abord est, est facile, Jérôme, il est simple, Lucia il est amusant, Lapri. il est sain. Euh, donc il euh, y a tout yeah, pour faire pour ceux qui sont tactiques, sur la navigation, et après so, le bateau dans tout seul. Quoi. performance comes down to tactics and navigation. Mm -hmm. 
even in light winds, these boats are capable of speeds in excess of 20 knots. Give them a good blow and you're looking at 30, 40 knots. Exciting times. By leveling up the crews, you get a close race. And a close race is a good race. And that applies to crew and spectators. Well, in the small port of Poldu, which isn't far from Les Grands Sables Beach, the seven boats involved are preparing to put to sea well aware of the challenges that are coming up. A regatta that involves 10 races in all. A sprint and a raid, a long distance race on the first and second days, and then a third day of sprints. The ADM 24 is pretty familiar in these parts as it was the boat used for the Tour de France à la Voix. That event no longer exists, so Eric Le Lostec decided to remobilize the fleet with a series of races that are as exciting to compete in as they are to watch. And day one from Cloar Cornet to Glenon Archipelago. All the crews eager to gain the upper hand. Flying Frogs won the first sprint and have got themselves into a decent position at the start of this first upwind leg. Decisions need to be made, risks need to be taken or not, as the case may be. The jostling for position over the early stages sees two different choices being taken. Three of the boats have headed out to the open sea Four of them have decided to hug the coastline, no doubt scanning the skies for signs of thermals that might create favorable breezes to fill their sails. DM24 weighs in at something like 580 kilograms. Add the three sailors to that, you've got about 800 kg and it doesn't take a lot of wind to get them moving. They are perfect for conditions like this. Can easily exceed the speed of the wind. Fastest point of sail is some between 90 and 100 degrees off the wind. that keeping the boat consistently fast is difficult. Four boats opting to take the coastal route have pulled ahead in the early stages. Royal Nautism is one of them. Flying Frogs are up there as well. Oblige, highly rated crew with Xavier Dubos. Scenery absolutely stunning. Huge tides around these parts. Off the coast of the Glenon Archipelago, two boats standing out in front. That's the Flying Frogs and Oblige. We've got Lake Glenon up there as well. And ADH 18 looking in good shape. Change of angle of the sail, we'll see the Jenica coming out. That was born of the Genoa and the Spinnaker. It's as indispensable on a boat like this as it is delicate to handle. Well, on the first race, it's the crew of Oblige that reap the rewards of. Uh, some tactical inshore racing. Behind them, we've got Lake Lenor and the 
flying frogs who look pretty solid. The black hull of the flying frogs. This is Oblige, who've stolen a little bit of a march on everyone else on the first long distance race. Weren't so sharp in the early stages. They finished second in the first sprint, beaten by the flying frogs. This will even things up, but higher point scores ah, in this race. This is uh, Xavier à la Dubois. Côte, il y avait certainement the un peu plus de pression. Say, we on a pretty quickly that there was some wind compression on the coast, so we tacked our way along the shore, trading places with the other boats. Once ahead, we kept our eyes on our nearest rivals, matched every move they made. Tous ceux qui étaient menaçants derrière, voilà. Donc, mais mais c'est vrai que c'est c'est une journée pour nous. Says it all. A dreamy day for us, says Dubois. C'est magnifique. Pierre ouais. Altier. Ah bah, de toute façon, le, 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 on ne le ferait pas s'il n'y avait pas autour euh, euh, le paysage qui nous entoure. Et, Lake Lennon, euh, je pense qu'il y en a qui font des milliers de kilomètres position. pour venir euh, apprécier cet endroit magnifique. Et rien qu'hier, la rentrée dans, dans Brûlant, là, c'était euh, avec le soleil couchant et rasant, et la lumière rasante, c'était des couleurs incroyables. Moi, je reviendrai en bateau, en vacances. Voilà. As people travel thousands of miles to come here and experience the landscape, the light, the colors, the sun. It's incredible. He says he'll be back on his boat one day. The first day of racing lived up to expectations. Basing the event at Cloar Kunwet has been a popular move amongst the seven crews from a racing perspective, the hierarchy has already been established. Oblige and Flying Frogs leading the table after day one, but they've got two more days of racing to defend their positions. And the second day, starting with a sprint, won once again by the Flying Frogs, and then on to the second long distance race. The start is both crucial and spectacular. Each of the trimarans vying for position and speed in close quarters while, of course, respecting the rights of way. Leeward over Windward, starboard over Port, and many, many more. Conditions aren't easy for the second day, a tailwind. It's a question of keeping the sails full. Multi-hull's not quite so good directly downwind the boat stable and maintain a good average speed. The Flying Frogs once again working well as they approach the Ile de Gois. Some eight kilometers off the mainland of Brittany. Much higher speeds in the first day, but all the crews still in with a shout in the early stages. One, two, four, in a very good position early on, helmed by Pierre Altier after taking the optimal course to the uh, Isle of Gua. Again, staying really close to the coast proved to be key, but things are about to get complicated for this crew. And once again, it's the Jenica that causes the problem. Now, this is where teamwork is so important. Altier with his hands full. Tiller and the main sheet, but he really is the man to solve this problem. There's some constriction at the top of the sail. LTA, I think, feeling that he's the man that knows exactly what to do here. He's certainly the most experienced in this crew.
Well, this is a disaster for 1 2 4. Sale was badly set in the first place. It's cost them valuable time, and even the slightest mistake in this type of a regatta is paid for in both places and cash in terms of prizes. Oblige on the horizon now, moving ahead of 1 2 4. So they hoist the sail for the second time. Route 4 seems to be the key here. But this will cheer a lot of sailors because it's happened to everyone. So they're on their way again, but Oblige and the Flying Frogs have uh, stolen ahead. They're in close quarters racing at the moment as Altier gets back to the helm. <laughs> oh la la, he can calm down now. Problem solved, but place is lost. Yeah, that's unlucky. They were going so well. Now coming back up to full speed, but they've lost at least three places, possibly four. Obliged, though. Benefit from the other boat's misfortune. and the Flying Frogs having an epic battle around the tip of Gua. Not sure that the five other crews are going to get a look in on the remainder of this second long race. Remember, ten races in the regatta, one, the worst result is uh, discarded. That could be crucial when it comes to the final stage on day three. Flying Frogs just a few metres behind Oblige. What a battle they had on day one. It seems uh, it's repeat on day two. One mistake could make all the difference. Crucial stage is passing the South Boy where the two boats seem pretty much glued together. Fantastic spectacle for those that have come out to watch the regatta. On the other side of the island, the sailing is absolutely optimal. It's a game of chess about to begin and victory will come down to root choice. The Belgians are playing safe, relying on the wind from the land. Oblige, they're opting for the shortest route. It's a brave, but in the end, fruitful choice. Xavier Dubois, Martin Chevenon and Louis Courraud take a second win in the long distance race, the raid. So Oblige across the line, their second win from four. Bigger point differentials in the long distance races, playing to their advantage. The Flying Frogs, third in the distance race on day one, second in the distance race on day two, but they've won both the sprints so far, so they're in a very competitive position. And we shouldn't forget the rest of the crews out there. Really good battle for fourth and fifth. 2 2 4 across the line in three. That's ADH 18. And then we've got Royal Nautism racing alongside 124 Ligue Lénard. Just centimetres between those two crews. But a disappointing race in the end for Ligue Lénard. Vraiment un grand bonheur, on est parti un petit peu à la traîne. Et franchement, on est très content parce que avec l'équipe, Belle coordination, ça c'est vraiment honest, top, on s'entendait très bien, ça parle peu sur le bateau really et c'est efficace, ce qui fait qu'à la sortie de Groix, on a dit on tente notre chance. Uh, so Tout le monde est à la chasse, il y a vraiment du monde derrière, très, très, très peu. 
Après une grosse bataille euh, le long de Groix, well, la race. sous Groix, well, euh, jusqu'au bout. Close. We had a big battle Groix, on s'est retrouvés euh, uh, south of the on island. était encore en tête, mais on était chassés. On était en contact de nouveau, on avait quelques mètres sur les flying frogs. Et là, il y avait deux options. Soit route directe, direct soit continuer sur Ginecker. In calm euh, nous, on a fait option de route directe. Dans la pétole. Dans la pétole. Under the Alors que tracé Genica à la côte euh, sur le continent, euh, là, on s'est dit... Waouh, wow, euh, là, 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 là c'est là que ça se joue. Et, 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 et au final, en fait, on a eu raison. Thomas Mounier saying que, que, façon, we wanted to try something, we were behind, so we had to try something different. C'est de le taquiner. Certainly, our move would have made them think. Bah voilà, ça n'a pas, ça pas marché, on a tenté off, la chose, et puis, it, euh, on a pris du plaisir à le faire, on allait au bout du, au bout du projet, et puis bon, bah, c'est des choses qui arrivent, hein. et voilà, de, on, on retiendra le, le positif. <rire> so, day three will be a completely different affair. The high pressure holds, the winds are light, and there'll be a series of six sprints to decide the overall outcome. Oblige ruling the waves over the longer distance, but in the match racing, it's the Flying Frogs who've been uh, in very good shape. Flying Frogs taking victory in the first three sprints to put them just ahead of Oblige, who had a second, a third, and then a damaging fifth But remember, the worst race will be deducted from the score. ADH18 having a good day as well. Three consecutive podiums. Super duel. Uh, ils ont été un peu meilleurs que, que nous sur les raids. What, donc, what a great duel, Lou. They were a bit better than us on the long distance, so he took uh, a bundle of points, les, but stadium. Because Donc, of the tout, fact that one of the races is deducted and we seem to be a little bit quicker on the shorter races, uh, we went dernière, into en fait. the final Donc, race on a pas à la needing just tout ce to voulait, finish ahead euh, of Oblige. Mais que uh, so we weren't really going for the win, we just needed uh, to uh, watch Oblige stay ahead of them. And we knew then that we would win the regatta. Well, for this regatta in South Brittany, the DM24s and their crews put on a really great show. Opinions, I think, were unanimous. Glowing reports all round. These three days of racing have been about skill and teamwork. The battle between the two leading crews provided uh, plenty of suspense up until the final seconds, but we shouldn't forget the other crews who've played a major part, ADH18, Sailing really well, skippered by Vincent Bouvier. Thibaut Mazarel and Paul Molinier on board as well. Behind them, the crew of Les Clénons, who finished second in the first of the long distance races. They showed huge potential. And the future looks bright for this race format. The organizers already thinking of 2023 and planning a series of a global scale. Comme je vous disais, le, le test event du World Diam Tour France, euh, c'est le début, j'espère, d'une nouvelle event. On, on s'est mis d'accord avec le concepteur et dès 2023, euh, on sera plus World testé pour être World Diam Tour, Tour France, avec un just the concept he très hopes, proche de ce qu'on a mis en place aujourd'hui, pas durant ce week-end, et euh, qui, va, qui devrait se développer euh, dès le mois de mai 2023, We've avec euh, 5 étapes, mais pas euh, rapprochées. Elles sont plus euh, les étapes tous les mois, un rendez-vous qu'on va fixer jusqu'au mois de septembre et euh, ça sera la première en France et on a déjà euh, des contacts pour le faire à Saint-Martin, des contacts aussi pour le faire en Chine, des contacts aussi euh, dans d'autres pays. Donc voilà, on va on, on, étape par étape, on va essayer de construire ce, ce raid de circuit du World Diam Tour. Les spectateurs ont certainement eu une bonne journée, les Diam 24s et leur crew, et ce format fait que c'est possible de enjoyer le meilleur du sport de la Olympic courses in an idyllic bay such as this 
with spectacular scenery and some welcome sunshine. Everything adds up and it seems there's huge potential for bigger and better. As far as the prizes go, ADH taking third place with Vincent Bouvier Oblige in the end. They dominated the longer races, but Xavier Dubois having to settle for second. And it was the Flying Frogs who took the regatta overall with some brilliant sprint racing on the final day. The Black Hulls have it and will no doubt be back in 2023.